Hello, good evening, guys. How are you doing today? Good evening. Good evening. That's so good. Not so good. Why is that? I feel like with some temperature, I think it's my del pijo. It's my what? My del pijo. What is that? My del pijo de año. Vladimir. Oh my goodness, Vladimir. <laughs> Didn't know that one. Didn't know that one. You got me there. You got me there. How old are you? I'm barely 32 years old, but uh, right now I feel sick. Yeah. But I, I think people back in the past, they, they were more, I don't know, active. And they yeah. didn't have as many illness as we have nowadays. And with all the vaccines that we have had, all the illness that we'd have had, Everything is just different, I believe. Because for example, I have had the COVID, chikungunya, Zika, and all those things that I have had and all the, uh, also the vaccines and then the medicines that also affect the body. So you see, it's like, eh, we're, <laughs> yeah, we're there, we're, we're- I had COVID twice. You had COVID twice? Yeah. Huh. And when it was chikungunya, I had it like three times. <laughs> you had chikungunya three times? Yeah. Wow. No, in my case, I just had it once and Zika once and COVID once that I know. Because I know sometimes we can be asymptomatic that we don't have symptoms. So I don't yeah. know if I have had it like that. But with symptoms, once. To tw 2020, actually. So I didn't end the year without COVID. I wish I had, but I didn't. Okay, um, we're gonna go with the attendance. So I'm gonna call roll with the participants that are already here, which I appreciate that you are here guys, okay? Uh, let's go here. And today is Tuesday. Yeah, Tuesday 31st. Okay. Um, Andres Giovanni Valdivieso Portillo. Present. Blanca Stephanie Navarro Flores. Present. I think it's not, yeah, the other one is not here. Um, David Samuel Galdames Monterrosa. Present, teacher. Okay. Dora Elizabeth Flores Mendez. Present. Erwin Lagos Andrade. Present, teacher. Okay. Fátima Lourdes Gaitán Romero. Present. Fernando Ernesto Cosme Morales. Present. Okay. Francisco Amadeo Villacorta Chávez. <clears throat> Present, teacher. Um, Fred, Present. Uh, yeah, yeah, I, I heard it. Thank you. <laughs> Freddy Vladimir Cortez López. I'm your teacher. Harvin Isaac Guevara Miranda. Yeah, okay. Um, Kenny Esmeralda Galvez Ruiz. Madeline Yamilet Molina González. Manuel de Jesús Sánchez Hernández. Present. Marlon Stanley Ramírez Reyes. Telma Clotilde Peña Martínez. William Alexander Ramírez Flores. Jessica Yanari Cortés Díaz. Jocelyn Imelda Rivas Abarca. Excellent. Wow, so I have a lot of students that are here today. So I don't have Fredis, Harbin, Kenya, Madeline. I don't have Marlon, Thelma, William, and Jessica. Oh, Madeline. Fredis here. Okay. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm, I, I was saying Marlon, Thelma, William, Jessica. None of them, right? Okay. 
Okay, so we're gonna continue as we do every day. It's, I'm sorry, wait a second. Yeah, that's there. So I'll, we're gonna continue with the pronunciation practice because that's the first thing we do, okay? I, I hope that you have practiced. Maybe you haven't because you hadn't had the chance, but I'm gonna ask you anyways. Have you practiced the tongue twister that we started learning yesterday? Did you practice today? Nah. No, I didn't have time. Oh, well. The, about don't having time. Mm, I don't know. Manuel, what is it? Yeah, in my case, I have been practicing the, during the afternoon. The seashell, uh, okay. seashore, she sells, you okay. know. Okay, <laughs> I got you, I got you, yeah. <laughs> okay, thank you, Manuel. Yes, I know. And guys, remember, it's not about not having time because you don't need an entire hour, not half an hour, not 15 minutes, not 10 minutes. You need just some two minutes or at least one minute. And it's gonna be perfect because I can say it many times. She sells seashells by the seashore. The seashells she sells are seashells, I'm sure. So if she sells seashells by the seashore, then I'm sure she sells seashore shells. And this right here is something. I don't know, I feel something right there. But I can say it like three times, four times in a row, and that's gonna be a practice, okay? Compared to not doing anything and doing one minute, you see? So that's the important thing that you need, you need, really need to practice, okay? That's what you need to do. Okay, um, but if you didn't, that's okay. I hope you practice the other days, maybe the rest of the week that you can, that you can practice. And I hope that the students that weren't on the section three, yeah, are there already because we need to be on section three already, okay? All right, guys, so I'm going to go right now and share my screen to do the pronunciation practice again. But before I do that, I need to ask you, um, the group work that I assigned yesterday, I was afraid today, let me, let me tell you that. I was afraid because I was like, what if they don't connect to the class because they don't want to do the activity that we, that we were talking about yesterday? And I was like, maybe that's going to happen. So I was a little bit scared, but I appreciate that you're here. <clears throat> At least 13 of you. Um, you know, like you're 19, but yeah, that's, that's a start. And it's not going to be difficult. I just want you to share something and talk yourself. I need you to speak because it's not about me speaking all the time. It's about you speaking. I'm just here to guide you. Okay. That's my purpose. Then um, I'm going to give you some time so you can get together with your classmates. So if you hadn't had the chance to do something because I know you're working. So I'm going to give you some minutes maybe to prepare the presentation, maybe to talk about the things that you can say. It's not a Okay, it's not a college presentation. It's not a lecture. You're not a teacher giving a presentation. It's just share what you know. Share those four things we were talking about yesterday. And that's it, that's it. No more than that. Okay, so do you agree with me giving you like some time to get together with your group? Yeah. Yes, teacher. Well, actually, my group already have it. We just need to get organized. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's what I'm telling you because sometimes you need to say like, "Hey, you're gonna do this, and I'm gonna do that, and we're gonna have this presentation." Maybe they haven't seen the presentation; someone did it, but they haven't put it together. So that's what I'm gonna give you some time to work on. Okay, but first, before we go with that, let's start like working out. Like we are in the gym because we're at the gym right now. We're at the pronunciation practice gym, the English gym. So I'm gonna give you um, some minutes to go and practice that pronunciation. You already have the tongue twister, right? But if you don't have it, this is the one. This is the tongue twister we are um, learning in order to understand the pronunciations of sh and s. I know it's difficult, 
I know it has some, even for me it's difficult, but it's gonna help you with your pronunciation, okay? So I'm gonna say it one more time or maybe twice so you can um, kind of remember the pronunciation, okay? She sells sea shells by the seashore. The seashells she sells are seashells, I'm sure. So if she sells seashells by the seashore, then I'm sure she sells seashore shells. She sells seashells by the seashore. The seashells she sells are seashells, I'm sure. So if she sells seashells by the seashore, then I'm sure she sells seashore shells. She sells, don't say she sells seashore shells. She sells seashore shells. Make sure that you pronounce both, both uh, S. You say both of them. Okay, one more time. She sells seashells by the seashore. The seashells she sells are seashells, I'm sure. So if she sells seashells by the seashore, then I'm sure she sells seashore shells. Okay, and we're gonna practice that for a little bit. Okay, I have a, let me see, with me, minus, minus three, it will be 13 students still. Yeah, 13, no, 14 students that I have now. Okay, that's a progress. We're just gonna practice. Then I'm gonna give you some time to sometimes to get together with your group. But right now, pronunciation practice. Remember, the more you say it, the better your pronunciation will get. If you say it just once, that's okay. But I will need you, please, I will need you to try and say it at least three times in a row. So it doesn't, because if you only say it, she sells seashells by the seashore, the seashells she sells are seashells, I'm sure. So if she sells seashells by the seashore, then I'm sure she sells seashore shells. And then another classmate, and then another classmate, and then another classmate, and maybe you forgot about it. So maybe try and say it once, twice, three times in a row. So when you finish saying it three times in a row, maybe you're gonna feel something because if you only say it once and then wait to say it again, that's not gonna help you, okay? Don't, don't be sleepy. I know it's tiring, but we're gonna get fun right now. We're gonna have some fun. Okay, let's see. Oh, uh, I need to, WWW needs to be in the same breaker room. Yes, teacher. Okay, there we go. Okay, let's go and practice.
Kenya. Can you hear me, Kenya? Yes, I'm sorry, I have bad connection. Okay, so maybe if you have bad connection or like, yeah, just try to keep your camera off, okay? Okay, thank you. Yes, I'm from my cell phone too. Oh, you're on your cell phone? Yes, and also on the computer. <laughs> oh, okay, so I'm gonna send you to the breaker room where you are, okay? And number two, right? Yes, it all. Okay. okay. Thank you.
Hello, Blanca. Hello, I have, I'm having problems with my internet. Okay, so were you in the class or you're just connecting? No, I, I was in the class. Oh, okay. Okay, so you were practicing with a group? No, no, because my internet was failing before that. Oh, got before. it. So you were at the beginning. Yeah, uh, I, I think that almost 10 minutes, I think. Oh, and, okay. then I, and then my internet was failing and, and I have to restart. But is it working good now? Yeah, I think, I think, yeah. Yeah, because I can hear you clear. Yeah. Okay, so your classmates are coming back. Let's see. Okay, so let's see. You were practicing. Maybe you got it better now because you have practiced a little bit more. And if you do this every day, okay, so you do it every day and you do it at least two minutes, three minutes of your time dedicated to practice pronunciation, you're gonna see, you're gonna improve in pronunciation. You're gonna improve really good. And maybe another key to having a good pronunciation is when you say the words that have a letter V, try to say the letter V. That's another thing that is gonna help you. For example, if I say video, um, have, try to say words with the letter B because that pronunciation is one pronunciation that the Spanish speaking people make mistakes a lot with because we try to say it as B and even though it's not B. Okay, so I'm gonna ask, is there someone here who wants to participate say in the tongue twister now? Me, teacher. Okay, David, excellent. Thank you very much. Let me share the screen. Okay, let's go. Okay. She sells seashells by the seashore. The seashells she sells are seashells, I am sure. So if she sells seashells by the seashore, then I am sure she sells seashore shells. Perfect. Good job, David. Only if this is not sure, this is sure. I'm sure. I'm sure, sure. Sure. I'm sure. I'm sure. I'm gonna, let me see. Maybe I can, wait a second. Sure. It's not sure. It's with, not with a letter U, it's like a letter O. Sure. Sure. I'm sure. Let sure. me, let me share the screen with you and you can see. So if you look like this in on Google, it's gonna send you to something like this, okay? And you can listen to it, you can go slower. And here in this part, you can watch how the lips move when you say the word. For example. Sure. 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 Sure, I'm sure. Slow. Sure. 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 I'm sure, I'm sure. sure. I'm sure, exactly. I'm sure. I'm okay. sure. Thank you. Okay, excellent. Someone else wants to try? Or nah? Me. Okay, 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 Fatima. Perfect, let me share the screen, okay. She sells seashells by the seashore. The seashells she sells are seashells, I'm sure. So if she sells seashells by the seashore, then I'm sure she sells seashore shells. Wow, good job, Fatima, perfect. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, that was really good. You see guys, if you practice 
or you try to say it, you're going to get really good at it. Maybe at the beginning, when you hear it the first time, you're like, eh, I don't know. But then when you practice, right? Someone else? Nobody? One yeah. more person. Okay, Manuel, this is... I will just try. Okay, you can go ahead. Okay, she sells seashell by the seashore. The seashell she sells are seashell, I'm sure. So if she sells seashell by the seashore, then I'm sure she sells seashore shells. Very good, good pronunciation. That was really good, actually, Manuel. The only thing is sure. Remember, okay. sure, not sure, it's sure. Again, sure, sure. exactly. That's something, guys. Okay, so there's something. When we are speaking in English, when we are learning English, actually, many people say, and this is like, I don't know how many people say this, but there's a lot of people who say, teacher, or I don't know, it's really hard for me to speak, but I can understand very well. Or sometimes it's like, I'm really good at English, but I can listen, I cannot speak. Why do you think that happens? Because you're used to listening. So your listening skills, perfect. But what about practicing? When you have the chance to practice speaking, you don't do it. So that's obviously the reason, that's why I'm better at listening than speaking. It's like you said, okay, teacher, I'm really good at riding a bicycle, but when I want to drive a car, I can't. Yeah, of course, because you're riding a bicycle. A bicycle is very different from a car, even though both things need direction and mechanic for each one of them. It's very different. So the same thing with you. The thing that you can understand English and you can comprehend when people, when they, they speak to you, it's because you're used to listening. But when you try to speak, that's the problem. It's so very common when people say that. Okay, so you need to practice. That's what I'm telling you. You need to practice and you need to have a lot of vocabulary, you need to learn the verbs, and you're gonna have a good pronunciation if you practice the stone twisters. Is it hot where you live, guys? I have seen two students right now doing this, like, it's hot. Is it hot right now? Oh, okay. Interesting, because here where I live, and you know that I live in a really warm or hot area in El Salvador, but it's not that hot, it's not hot right now, well, I'm, I'm good. So it's interesting to see you like, like you're living in San Miguel right now, right? Suffocating. Okay, I'm gonna give you some time to go ahead and complete the activity that we had and you can go ahead and do it in groups. Um, yesterday I took a picture, I think, of some of the groups. Let me see. So the first group, Maybe some groups are not fulfilled because some of the participants are not here, but I'm gonna, wait, wait, wait a second. There were two, three groups, okay. But I'm gonna assign some other participants to the group because I know some students weren't here yesterday. And guys, if you will be so kind, if you don't have problems with your internet connection, I will ask you to please turn on the camera. So Blanca was in the group, Blanca, Blanca, Blanca. Blanca was with us, with Dora, Fernando, and I. Yeah, Blanca, let's do David, uh, Doris, uh, Fernando. David, Fernando, and Harbin. So only the four of us, Dora, Blanca, Fernando, and David. But Harbin was there. Yeah, it says Harbin was there in my screenshot. I took a picture when you were in the groups. Okay. Andres, Erwin, Fredis, Kenya, Jocelyn.
Next one is Fatima, sure. Madeline, Manuel, <laughs> I'm assigning the groups. It's not attendance, okay? Okay. Erwin was in your group? Yeah, Erwin. It was Jocelyn. Oh, yeah, it's it true, was... it's true. That's what I'm telling you. Uh, oh. Freddy's. Freddy's is with Andres, Erwin, Freddy's, Kenya, and Jocelyn. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I took a screenshot. Okay, let me see. Work about here again. I'm sorry. So it's Fatima, Madeline, Manuel, Telma. William, William is not here. So Francisco, it's gonna be in your group. So assign something to Francisco. Maybe in this time you have something to do with it. So assign something there. And I'm gonna add Janari to the same group. So Janari, it's gonna be, no, well, no. You think that Janari can be in your group, guys? I'm gonna add it, or maybe I'm gonna add it in another group. Okay, I'm gonna add Janari where Freddy's is. Okay, Freddy's. So if you can give something to her to say anything, will be good. Okay. Okay, so let's get to work.
Following with the three. I, and, I. Okay. And we only have here the first line. The millennial generation is highly educated one. This is the, and you explain that. Yes. The second one, younger employees are compared, compared to older employees, more trained. Yeah. And all of the other things you. The, 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 is their trainable only. Yes, we only as the, the first line and the mm -hmm. part of the second one. This is in the presentation and you. It's a, uh, no, it's a, they are tradable, tradable. Yes, more trainable, yes. Younger employees are, compared to older employees, more trainable. Mm -hmm. uh, this is this is the the, the title. Mm -hmm. They are trainable, and yeah. this is the part that you explain that. Mm -hmm. And this the the third one is they bring new perspectives, mm -hmm. and uh, this is I put that one in the chat, and here only we have the first lines yes okay yeah. and you explain that okay okay and the second part is for jarvin three characteristics were considered to leave millennials effectively the first
You are ready, guys? Almost. Almost, okay. Okay. Yeah, we need more time, please. Okay, okay. Compulsive. Okay. Okay. And Are you ready? We need part? a little bit more time. About a couple of minutes, teacher. Okay. Minute, okay. Please. okay. 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 And we have. Hello. Are you ready, guys, or do you need more time? I think we're ready. Okay. We're just gonna wait some minutes because your classmates are not ready. Okay. <laughs> It's not a big presentation, but something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see it. Okay. But your classmates, uh, they're going to need some time. Okay. So I'm going to give you some some minutes. Okay. Okay. You, so you can go over the presentation.
Hello, hello. <clears throat> so before we start, we're gonna go with the attendance because it's time already. I just gave you some extra minutes to finish your presentations. Okay, let's see. Andres Giovanni Valdivieso Portillo. Present. Yes. Blanca Stephanie Navarro Flores. Present teacher. David Samuel Caltames Monterrosa. Present teacher. Dora Elizabeth Flores Méndez. Present. Erwin Lagos Andrade. Present teacher, present teacher. Okay. Fátima Lourdes Gaitán Romero. Present. Fernando Ernesto Cosme Morales. Present. Francisco Amadeo Villacorta Chávez. Present teacher. Freddy Vladimir Cortés López. I'm here teacher. Harvin Isaac Guevara Miranda. Present. Um, Kenya Esmeralda Galvez Ruiz. Present. Okay. Um, Madeline Jamilet Molina González. Manuel de Jesús Sánchez Hernández. Present. Present teacher. Okay. I'm guessing the other one was Madeline. Yes. Okay. Manuel de Jesús Sánchez Hernández. I said present. present. Okay. Marlon yes. Stanley Ramírez Reyes. Telma Clotilde Peña Martínez. Present. William Alexander Ramírez Flores. Jessica Yanari Cortés Díaz. I'm here, teacher. Jocelyn Imelda Rivas Abarca. Present. So that means I'm only missing one, two students. Sometimes, guys, it's really hard for me to look at your attendance. Look, this is how your attendance looks. Like, these are your names. You see? So it's really tiny, tiny, tiny. But that's the best way I can cover your whole name. But yeah, exactly. This is what I need to do. To go like this is gonna be better. Yeah, but anyways. Okay, so we are three groups. I'm gonna do it. Wait a second. I got a nervous, nervous tick. When I'm nervous and when I'm really happy, I got this eye pumping. I don't know, it's something, it's itchy. Okay, anyways, um, I'm gonna go do activity. So I'm gonna have a participant of each group to tell me one number from one to four. And the ones who gets, gets the number is the one that is gonna start. So from group number one is gonna be Blanca, number two is gonna be Andres, and number three is gonna be Fatima. Okay, so Blanca, tell me one number from one to four. Three. What is it? Three. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> we win the prize. <laughs> you won the prize. But look, <laughs> but, but you won the prize this time, so you don't have a bad luck at all. It seems like you have a good luck. Okay, Blanca, so your group is the one that's gonna start. You can share the <laughs> okay. screen and start. We're just gonna listen here. Okay. Dave is going to share the screen. Okay, who's gonna share the screen? Me, teacher. Okay. 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 Good evening, partners. We are the first group in this case. We are talking about the millennials at the workplace. We are Dora Elizabeth Flores Mende, Blanca Stephanie Navarro Flores, Fernando Ernesto Come Morales, Yarvin Isaac Guevara Miranda, and myself, David, David Samuel Galdama Monterrosa. The first time is for uh, uh, Doris, see advantage, millennials bring to the workplace. Okay. Go ahead, Doris. 
the first uh, advantage is the, their uh, high education. The more uh, millennials uh, have a graduation from school, and they are uh, many higher uh, education uh, is uh, wherever uh, they are uh, uh, high high skills in 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 in, in the work in workplace. There, they are a trainer. Why? The younger employees are um, compared to the older employees. Uh, their uh, younger is more trainer because uh, recently out of the school or the college in the, the his, uh, their mind is a uh, open mind. Is yes, yes, it's too easy and uh, retainable there. In, and they are uh, more uh, uh, acceptable, the, 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 in training the many, many things. And the other is they bring new perspective. Uh, the younger employees, uh, they are a different perspectives in, in the company. When each the company needs a customer for younger people or sells products for younger people, uh, the millennials have uh, good ideas for that, but it's a... Uh, so it's a very, uh, 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 they are um, my open mind in different things. Excellent. Excellent. Now we have Jarvin. Okay, good, good evening, everyone. I going to tell a little bit about three characteristics, one considering to lead millennials effectively. Number one is make sure that your company and team stay, stay up to date technology. Remember right nowadays we have a lot of tools to make our, our life easier. And if you develop in the company, going to be easier to make your job. Number two shows Showcase the learning opportunities available at, at your company. Okay, if you are engaged with your company and you feel part of your company, you go and grow up as a person as the, the company grow up. Okay, number two is tell millennials candidate about the, how important the position is and then they will be made available contribution to the company. This is a little bit easier to explain because if you make your 100%, your company going to feel good with you and you're going to feel good with your company because you are your best effort and you're going to feel good with that. And millennials are that, are like this. Excellent. Now we have uh, Fernando, three more characteristics were considered to lead millennials respectively. Go ahead, Fernando. Okay. Uh, chip team from bus to mentor millennials conceive of leadership very differently than previous generation. Uh, well, uh, the, the previous generation used to to be a, for example, a hierarchy hierarchy uh, hierarchy uh, position. You have a boss, and with the millennials. Uh, sometimes that doesn't work. So that in 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 work in a workplace, if you want to be a, to be lead millennial, you have to change that. Next, uh, constant feedback and admiration. Uh, well, uh, uh, I am a millennial. For example, for me, uh, I like when. Uh, we, we receive a credit for the thing that we are doing every day. And 
is very important because the, the motivation on a millennium is a, a, a fundamental part of their behavior in, in a workplace, their, how, how you uh, do the, the tax every day. Uh, that, is, that is very important. And, is, and also uh, when you uh, evaluate in a millennial and you, you share your feedback to, the, to them, uh, they, can, they can receive that, that feedback and maybe improve uh, something that we are doing wrong, for example. Next. Well, uh, that is a, uh, uh, it's, it's, it's very difficult when you, uh, what do you say, mix planning with, uh, when you are improvising or the habits of the millennials, because for example, the, the habits of millennials is, are very different. Uh, uh, nowadays, uh, after pandemic, for example, uh, uh, the millennials, it, well, uh, a lot of millennials are working from home. Uh, the 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 habits and the routine change. So, uh, is 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 a very important part of to be a lead of a millennial to uh, micromanagement that that part. And maybe, for example, you we some some of millennials that are working from home. Uh, they feel that freedom and it's very important to to feel that because they they feel that uh, are doing the you their, their work and their time and it's a it's a it's a a good a good uh, capability of a work uh, that's it okay excellent now we have blanca Okay, just introduced to the three stereotypes about millennials. I'm going to talk about uh, millennials will make up half of the global workforce by 2050. Although generally, generalizations are not helpful, broadly speaking, members of this generation born between 1980 and 90, 1994 and also known as Generation Y, are bound together by the fact they have come of age during a severe financial crisis, have been both the pioneers and guinea pigs of technological change, and are more plugged into a global network than their predecessors. So what are the myths? about millennials worker and how true they are. The first of the, of the stereotypes that we are talking about, it's that millennials are lazy. How true is that? Well, millennials naturally see things slightly different, differently. Presentis doesn't make sense to people used to working on the moon or on the move. Why be answered to your desk for eight hours when you can reply to those email, emails and start drafting notes during your commute into work or even in a cafe? That's not laziness. That's just working as smarter as millennials may be. Next, please. Okay, millennials work to live rather than live to work. Okay, as a student, Anne Victorian Mayland co wrote from Millennials with Love, a collection of experience of her peers in the workplace. What we found in our research and for contribu contributors is that we didn't like the phrase work-life balance, but instead we're talking about work-life integration. Okay, what we're talking about that, that we have to, sorry, uh, 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 can you, uh, yeah. 
what we're talking about that, that we have to make a balance between your work and live your life because our predecessors uh, always take care about work and doesn't take a rest, doesn't live their life, doesn't enjoy, uh, didn't enjoy their life, their life. That's why that this is one of the stereotypes because people think that millennials live their lives uh, too compulsive or something like that, but they just want to take a balance between the two of them, work and live. Okay, next. Millennials are compulsive job hoppers. What is job hoppers? Is when you change your work a lot. Okay. Just as millennials enter to workforce in greater numbers, there, there is a stack of literature characterism, then a job, then jo as job hopping. Needy, deluded, narcissist. Okay, but why is it true many may have one foot of the door? And according to a Deloitte survey, two of every three millennials hope to move on from their current employer by 2020, Young people moving on is an exceptional to generation Y. Figures on job tenure for Americans in their 20s today are almost exactly the same as they were in the 2080s. Job hopping, it appears, is a common feature of being a young worker and not specifically in this particular crop. Okay. Thank you. And the last part is three tips to bring the best out of millennials at the workplace. Obviously, if you are managing people, you need to know people. And the millennials are the majority of the workforce in this time. And we need to know what are the characteristics, what are the things that they need to do to be appreciated in the world. And uh, we need to to know the most we need to know about them or the most we know, the most we need or the most we can manage them, the millennials. The first uh, tip is make teamwork a part of your company school too. In the school of the majority of millennials, they, they learn how to work in team groups. This are the part of the biggest change in education in the last time. And, the millennials uh, work in, in this part. They are uh, uh, trained in team board and they need to more be more comfortable in a, is doing the team board. It's a part of the, the it's a be part of a project. Uh, they work by uh, this method in the school from the beginning to the end of the school. The, elementary, middle, and high school. And they need to know the, the, the roles that they have in the, in the team. It is important for them. The second one is uh, focus more on the results and not in the roles. Uh, this one, uh, as was Fernando was saying, and as was uh, Blanca was saying, uh, the Qualtrics, Qualtrics is a technology company, this research, into millennials and they found that the perception that the generation is lazy is based on the gap, on the, the disconnection between the millennials and older generations. Because the first, the older generation, they prioritize structure and process. And uh, they value things like fixed board, schedules and dress codes. But millennials are more focused on their end results. Uh, this means that it's important to relax the rules a bit, the dress code and something like that. A lot of millennials are hard workers, but they need to get some freedom in their work. And the last one is a lot remote working and telecommuting. Uh, they need to 
the last uh, the second tip they need to experiment some freedom and what freedom is they need to know they can do part of her job of of their job in house or, or in other place in another place uh, if the company have these facilities or this freedom uh, the millennials were better in the other place okay thank you for your attention blessing to all of you thank you bye 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 no <laughs> we're not leaving yet okay thank you <laughs> very much guys <laughs> okay okay let's give them an applause perfect good job guys very good very good okay so as you were the first group blanca you are going to choose who's the next group andres or fatima okay fatima. andres or fatima okay fatima your group is the next one okay i'm going to share the screen Okay, uh, so good evening, everyone. Good evening. Uh, we, are, we are going to start the presentation. We are going to take turns to speak. And the first one is going to be Madeline. Madeline, are you there? Oh, I think Madeline. I don't know if Madeline was, but did, did she speak to you in the breakout rooms? Yes, she did. Mm, okay, yeah. Because she sent me a message earlier. I'm still in traffic. She told me she was in traffic, but I don't know if she's in traffic. She was tra on traffic. You look if she's here. <clears throat> oh yeah, she's here, but maybe she's not there. Madeline, can you hear us? Okay, guys, maybe just go ahead and start with the next part. Madeline maybe is on traffic right now. It's not a big deal, don't worry. So we skip the part of Madeline? If you want to. Mm -hmm. It's okay because she's in traffic. Maybe she's going to do it later by herself. But if you want to say it, say it. You can say it. It's, it's your choice. Up to you. Okay. Um, I'm going to say uh, Madeline's part. Okay, thank you. Briefly, uh, first we, we have the advantage that millennials brings to work. We have the first one is innovation. Uh, they think traditional business models that are not conducive to innovation are leading to high levels of job dissatisfaction for this group. As we all know, uh, the millennials grow up with with the technology. So um, generally, all, most of the millennials feels like the innovation is essential for business growth. And I think not only the millennials, I'm not millennials. And I think this is, this is true. This is something that every company, every business need to pay attention. 
Okay, guys, in this case, I'm going to talk to you about the this advantage. So training trainable. So younger employees are compared to older employees, uh, more trainable. Uh, they have a fewer stretched work habit that uh, may need to be trained, retrained, sorry. They are also more recently out of the school, so they are generally more open to learning. So this topic is really um, interesting because uh, teenager people really know about the technology. They can use very well the device, any computer, any uh, cell phone, any other device. They really had the advantage uh, how to use it. So, so uh, I guess younger people, younger employees, for them, it's not necessary to any feedback or any training because uh, the good advantage for them is that uh, really know they really know about uh, the use technology. So um, they know how to make a good commitment, how to, in a group, in a good group of setting, they're showing excellent uh, attendance. Uh, they are giving excellent training. If there is a group upsetting, so uh, they are showing, uh, ex uh, they are developing excellent uh, productivity. If there is a there is a work, so in this case, uh, the next step is going to say it. Uh, someone else. Thank you. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I try to explain a little about this topic, advantage. A new perspective. They are specific for thinking about the box which changes fresh marketing that reason with new audience. Uh, we are, well, I think that for the millennials, we are constantly to looking for a new opportunity for innovate a different problems. Maybe, well, I think in some person because uh, constantly are to change, to try to change the words. For example, uh, I was looking in, uh, in some pains, pace, I was um, I was reading about the Elon Musk. Maybe this man tried to change the uh, um the words using other technologies or a. That was it. You're done, guys. No. no. Then we have a. I, I don't know if Francisco was done. Francisco, I don't know if it is your microphone or maybe the internet, but there's some kind of interference. Oh. Hello, guys. Hello. Hi. Hello. Good. Hear me? We can hear you and you say, hear me, but we didn't hear the can. So those there are some words that we can't hear. Right now we cannot, if you're speaking, we cannot hear you.
Okay, maybe continue. Okay. Then we have uh, the characteristics to live the millennials. Uh, the first one is be a mentor. The millennials wants to be appreciated for what they are doing well and coached or trained on how to improve. Mm -hmm. They right. don't necessarily want constant, constant feedback, but they do want regular feedback and mentoring to learn, grow, stretch, and improve. It's really important to uh, feel appreciated at work, feel that the work that you are doing uh, is, I mean, is something that worth and their recognition is really important and you need to be a mentor to them. You need to be aware of what the what areas they need to improve uh, because we are not good in everything. There are some skills maybe soft skills that we are not good at them and maybe we need a little coach or a training. Uh, the point here is that you need to help them to be better at work. And of course in your in and you are in where you also grow as a person. Uh, Thelma is going to be the next speaking here. Fatima, where did you do the presentation? I do it myself. Well, what what um, software was that? Was a PPT or what? Mm, PowerPoint. But like with, it looks very, I don't know. <laughs> did you use like a plantilla in Spanish? No, no. How do you do it then? I am creative. Yeah, I can see that. You're really good at it. Good presentation. Okay, hey, but where is Telma? Telma? Talk, talk. Are you there? Telma. Yes, I'm, I'm okay. here, but I... What? You're here, but? Maybe the internet, her internet please, is please. down. What is it, Thelma? We can hear you, Thelma. Yep. Are you ready, Thelma? Your microphone is on. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Fatima here. Fatima. What did she say? Did you say Fatima? Oh. Who else is with you, Fatima, besides Thelma? Eh, Manuel, Francisco, Thelma. And William, but William. William, but he, he said that he was awesome. at work. Okay, okay, get it. Oh, Thelma and disconnected. Madeline. Yeah, Thelma disconnected already. So Thelma is not going to participate. So maybe um, one of you guys besides Fatima, because Fatima already said Madeline's part, or I don't know if Madeline's there and she wants to read this, but if there's someone beside. I want to do this activity. Maybe you can read it, Manuel. Sure. Uh, okay. Yes, I'm going to continue with the presentation. 
so characteristic to let them so be confident and compete uh, competence so the value it the value it achievement um, and are confident in their ability to advance in their career and they respond to leaders who um, exude uh, confidence and competence. Additionally, uh, they evaluate leaders who create uh, collaborative diverse and creativity teams in environment where ideas can be expressed uh, freely. So in this case, um, as I think, uh, be confident in memes that uh, people will never give up. They are trying to fight in order to achieve their goal, just to uh, improve uh, excellent work uh, in the area of work, or for example, in the area of uh, when they want to study, they want to achieve any goal, or on the job, they want to achieve the, uh, the goal showing excellent commitment just to uh, to reach the goal. So uh, be confident in all what they do. So it's, uh, for this topic, uh, be confident means that uh, they can fight by the, by the goal just to, uh, just to uh, appreciate what they want to achieve in their life. So the uh, the value uh, showing excellent uh, principles. So they are fighting to be just on the right way. Okay, this is uh, what I can say about this uh, characteristic. Okay, it's okay. Is there? Uh, thank you, Manuel. Is there another presentation? Is there another slide or not? This is the last one. And how many slides we have besides this one? Well, uh, seven slides. Seven slides. Yeah, there are three tips, three stereotype, oh, characteristic. Oh, okay. So, um, okay. Let's try to cover as many as we can in the next three minutes, because then I'm, I'm going to need the time to go with Andres, Erwin, Freddy, Kenya, Jessica, and Jocelyn, okay? Try to cover as many as you can. I'm going to give you three minutes. Okay. Uh, well, this part is Madeline, so I'm going to explain it quickly. As the third characteristic to live a millennial is that you need to give them the technology that they need because uh, they want to use the technology in every facet of their job. And since they have grown up with it at their fingerprints, they are comfortable enough to use technology effectively and efficiently. So uh, you should give them the opportunity to make changes. Uh, well, you also need to give them the opportunity to make changes to existing operation using uh, the technology. Then is Manuel turn again? Sure. And uh, now uh, we have tips to bring the best, to best out of them, uh, let them learn and develop. So give them opportunities to develop uh, new skills. You can also assign them new responsibilities and different projects to hold their attention while giving them a sense uh, that they are le leveling up uh, to more responsibilities and challenges. So for this, uh, for this topic, uh, the millennials, uh, it's really easier for them to use the technology. Uh, it is really easier for them uh, to express themselves, uh, how to uh, get the opinions, for example, uh, how to use a good communication on device, how to control the technology. So uh, it's really good for them to, uh, the, the way they are learning the, the devices. Uh, 
the responsibilities the the the, the advantage for them is uh, how to produce to produce excellent results for example and uh, on the area of work expressing uh, good ideas fresh ideas and how to uh, develop excellent commitment uh, and on the area of the work etc okay uh, okay i'm gonna stop you right there and i think it's time but i think you did a good job guys it's just that we don't have enough time right but you did a good job i really like your presentation that's really creative really good yeah maybe just go ahead with it and i can see it okay next one okay okay and that's the last one a little oh that's the last one Okay, you, if you want to see, read the conclusion or the, the summary, you can do it. Hey, I don't know, Francisco, if you want to read it. Okay, okay. You seem like the Erin has a different opinion or viewer point of millennials. Some of them see millennials as lazy of job, job, job hoppers, while others see them as hardworking are creative. They can be great employees if you think if you find they fight you to unlock um promote their strengths. Their strengths. Okay. Thank you very much. Their Thank strength. you guys. Good job. Thank you very much. Good job. Now obviously it's the time to well, like the group is Andres, Erwin, Fredis, Kenya, Jessica, and Jocelyn. Okay, go ahead. Try to keep it brief, okay? Yeah, it's gonna be a short, a short presentation to share shits because um, it's small and simple presentation. Okay, no, I don't think so. I see a lot of letters. Okay, good evening, everyone. In our group, um, we're going to talk about millennials. Everyone's talking about millennials. That's the topic of the day. If you can see millennials are actually, um, you can see different kind of words right there. They're multi stacks demanding, confident. And when it says laptops, uh, most of the millennials are good at laptops. They use a lot of emails. And they like to be on teamwork. Actually, work-life balance. Uh, multitask. I consider myself multitask because um, where I work at, um, I should have to do almost everything. So I think we're we're like open minded. So um, we're gonna continue in the second slide. Um, I think Ken, yeah, Ken Kenya is gonna gonna start. Yes. Hello. Advantages they bring at the workplace. They are highly educated. The millennial generation is a highly educated one. It's actually the most educated generation currently in the workforce. That could be because Generation X have many sisters and brothers, so their parents <laughs> couldn't give them a great education. And then Generation X try to give them a better education and also millennials were more care about different careers, not only math careers or teacher careers or, or something like that. They were more open and start to look also for the, for the future. The trainable younger employees are compared older employees more trainable. Uh, if we see in, in this time, um, we have more technologies and more and better technologies uh, for educated uh, and in this type of Educated is more important for for a millennial generation, right? Yeah. 
uh, we have we have all things for for study and and to uh, and, uh, I forget that, that word, but uh, we have our own thing for 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 be more and um, better uh, employees. Uh, <coughs> to bring new perspective, having younger employees is a benefit to any company because they'll bring a different perspective to able. Uh, we don't we uh, in this in this time uh, just we are all kind of of things to do uh, for trainer for um, to do best the, our 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 job um, I don't know if you something help me. Yeah, actually, um, if you can see, um, millennials are quick learners too. So in our in the job environment, we actually that's why um, most of if you can see most of the millennials are since that they're quick learners, uh, they could uh, actually they are able to handle um, most of the jobs and most pressure jobs that they nowadays are. So I think we're gonna continue with the next slide. Hello, hello guys, how are you? The millennials yes, is a, the, the generation that you can find in work, input characters to consider it, to learn them. Millennials are idealists and have a strong sense of one them, one day, leaders to be. In short, they want their leaders to be heroes. Superheroes movie are box office winner with millennials who have a integrity and sense of fairness and concern for employees. This is the generation so special, but uh, for me uh, and, the, and the group, despite the millennials are efficient, but the company must adapt by the kind of generation and all managers must uh, have a knowledge of how to manage the millennials generation. That's all. Okay, I will continue with this slide. Tips to manage them. Uh, millennials are expert multitaskers because most of millennials have the ability of performance more than one task at the same time. And today, constantly, constantly connected young workers expect, expect flexibility. flexibility. Uh, that's the ability to adjust the change in your life without creating stress or drama and the autonomy in the world. And autonomy is when you have the, the freedom to work in a way that suits you and you try to decide how and when you should be done your work. And millennials don't want to be tied to an eight hour office schedule. Uh, most of millennials are trying to, to have an all business uh, in El Salvador after pandemic, many people try to have uh, no business because many jobs was was finished uh, due to pandemic. So that's one of the characteristics of millennials. And they do not share previous generations elevated view of in-person collaboration. Millennials try to collaborate in everything and marathon in work sessions within the confines of an office. Uh, millennials maybe don't feel comfortable being too much time in a, in an office. And they just care about results. And I think that for me, it's not too good because when you are caring only about results, 
maybe you can be obsessed or anxious. So you only have to be, you have to try to be efficient and try to do your best. Okay, that's it. Uh, okay, yes, perfect. Okay, good evening. We are going to continue with uh, can we use some stereotypes that already mentioned our last partners? Uh, well, as a, they mentioned before, uh, millennials will see larger hoppers. This is uh, true because nowadays, uh, millennials, some of the priorities that they have is to make money. And sometimes they can move from another job just to get a better salary. And sometimes it's whatever is casual. Nowadays, it's really common that millennials work and study at the same time. So they pay their career, they pay for his, his or her bills, and they move to another job because of their salary expectation. And sometimes it's about a schedule time and for the work environment. Also, supposedly they are a, we are narcissists and selfish. This is not is this is a, not real because. A, as you can see and identify, this is false because we consider everybody uh, and we identify that we can have the same objectives as another person has. Uh, talking about job, of course. Also, take instruction from superiors partly. This is uh, false because I guess millennials, we respect our sucks and if we receive a good instruction, we are thankful for that is we receive a bad instruction and we consider that it was our fault, we will mention, we will do it better the next time. This is not going to happen again. Uh, but if this is not something that was our fault, we will tell our, our rights. And another one is supposedly we cannot take hardships. And nowadays uh, that we are living in a world that is uncertain for millennials, we uh, take advantage of that and we we'll, we know that this is just to be a for a, a difficult situation just for a while and this is going to be resolved as soon as possible and we are going to find a way how to resolve it uh, Fred is, is going to continue with the other ones yes um if you could see it says have bad work ethic actually and um, that's false because if you can see most of the millennials uh, actually, they like they like to be more um, ethic. They like to think. They like to have more results at workplace. So we we like the millennial generation. We're not the generation that is stuck on just one thing. We like to do always something better and to improve what we what we like to do. And we actually will we're able to do. And the next one is, um, it says millennials are lazy, but the other one is false too. If you can see it's on black and on top it says what's our false and true. So most of the millennials are, maybe there's like a few of them that they're lazy. Yeah, uh, actually I know some neighbors that are lazy, but um, we can exclude them. <laughs> but um, most of the millennials, um, like to um, be more active because um, I think they like to have more income in their house or, and they're, they don't, they don't, they're not the kind of person that they like to be stuck on one thing. They like to do one, more than one, one thing in their life because they actually, they, they want to be uh, successful. I could give you an example, the teacher. She only, she's not the, the kind of teacher that only has one job. She says she has like three jobs. So four jobs. If you can see, she's one of the good examples of millennials. And the next one are financially, um, how do you say the word? Il, elite, um, uh, il, nah. Right now, I cannot help you with that. <laughs> elite, illiterate. Um, yeah, I think that's how I found it, illiterate. And if you could see it, um, and in financially, we would kind of organize. We're not the kind of person that um, like to 
well, in, in my case, I'm not the kind of person that like to it's, um, be spending um, money on all, like going crazy. I'm the kind of person that like um, to be saving because I always think about the future. So I think uh, most of the millennials are good at that. And not least, but the last one are um, the millennials are digital native and are therefore tech savvy. Um, actually, um, most of the millennials, um, I think because um, this generation was more on technology, how the technology was evolving. So most of the millennials are good at uh, computers, cell phones, apps, um, programming, because um, how technology was evolving, um, we were like from teenagers into where now. So actually we absorb all that and that's why we're all good about it. I think that's all for today. And um, my computer frozen. <laughs> there you go. So these are the team members. Uh, Kenny Esmeralda Galvez Ruiz, Jessica Yenari Cortez Villa, Jocelyn Imelda Rivas Abarca, Andres Giovanni Valdivieso Portillo, Erwin Lagos, my person, and the teacher, Diana Guadalupe Rodriguez Sayas, and we're in module English Events One. That will be it. Perfect. Good job, guys. Good job. So, big congratulations to all of you. You did a really good job. It's getting out of your comfort zone, the thing that I want, okay? I'm not going to go with the attendance of last time. I'm just going to confirm the people that are not here because I know it's time to go already and you have some sleep to do. Okay, let's see. Uh, Marlon Stanley Ramirez Reyes, William Alexander Ramirez Flores, and yeah, I think those are the only two that didn't come for class today. Okay, guys, I will see you tomorrow. I will, uh, it, the word, I'm sorry, Vladimir was illiterate. Yeah, I, actually, before um, saying it, I found it on Google, but mm. at the time that I was expressing myself, I forgot about it. <laughs> okay, okay, it's okay. <laughs> okay, mm. guys, I think that everybody's go going already. So have a good time, okay? Okay, good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Have a great night.